I, if I started with this matrix A, B, C, D, uh, then I wouldn't, I, I, I'm not even going to write this down, I'm just going to ask you. Because in elimination we're, we're doing rows. But suppose we wanted to exchange the columns of a matrix. How, how would I do that? What, what, what matrix multiplication would do that job? Uh, actually, why not? I'll write it down. So, so this is like just, I'll write it under here and then hide it again. Okay, suppose I had my matrix A, B, C, D, and I want to get to A, C over here and B, D here. What matrix does that job? Can I multiply, can I cook up some matrix that produces that answer? And I, you can see from where I put my hand, I was really asking, can I put a matrix here on the left that will exchange columns? And the answer is no. If I so I'm just bringing out again this point that when I multiply on the left, I'm doing row operations. So if I want to do a column operation, where do I put that permutation matrix? On the, on the right. If I put it here, where I just barely left room for it, so I, I'll exchange the two columns of the identity, then it comes out right. Because now I'm multiplying a column at a time, this, the, this is the first column and says take one, take none of that column, one of this one, and then you got it. Over here, take one of this one, none of this one, and you've got AC. So, in short, to do column operations, the matrix multiplies on the right. To do row operations, it multiplies on the left. Okay. Okay. And it's row operations that we're really doing. Okay. And of course, do I, I, I mentioned in passing, but I better say it ver very clearly, that you can't exchange the orders of matrices. And, th and that's just the point I was making again here. A times B is not the same as B times A. You have to keep these matrices in their Gauss-given order here, right? You, you, but, uh, but you can move the parentheses. So that, in other words, the commutative law, which would allow you to take it in the other order, is false. So we have to keep it in that order. Okay. So uh, what? What next? I could do this multiplication. I could do E32, so let me come back to see what that was. Here was E21, and here is E32. And if I multiply those matrices together, E32 and then E21, I'll get a single matrix that does elimination. Uh, I don't want to do it that way. I don't, I don't, uh, if I do that multiplication, th there's a better way to do this. And, and, and so in this last few minutes of today's lecture, can I anticipate that better way? The better way is to think not how do I get from A to U, but how do I get from U back to A? So reversing steps is going to come in. Inverse, uh, uh, I'll use the word inverse here. Okay, so th let me make the first step at what's the inverse matrix. All the matrices you've seen on this board have inverses. I, d I didn't write any bad matrices down. 
We, we spoke about possible failure, and for a moment we put in a matrix that would fail. But right now, all these matrices are good. They're all invertible. And let's take the inverse. Well, let me say first, what does the inverse mean? And find it. OK, so we're getting a little leg up on inverses. OK, so this is the final moments of today. Ah, sorry. He's still there. OK. Inverses. OK, and I'm just going to take one example and then we're done. The example I'll take will be that E. I'm l so my matrix is 1, 0, 0, minus 3, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And I want to find the matrix that undoes that step. So what was that step? The step was subtract 3 times row 1 from row 2. So what matrix will get me back? What matrix will bring back, you know, if I started with a 2, 12, 2, and it changed it to a 2, 6, 2 because of this guy, I want to get back to the 2, 12, 2. I want to find the matrix which, which undoes elimination, the matrix which multiplies this to give the identity. And you can tell me what I should do in words first, and then we'll write down the matrix that does it. If this step subtracted 3 times row 1 from row 2, what's the inverse step? I add 3 times row 1 to row 2, right? I add it back. What I subtracted away, I add back. So the inverse matrix in this case is, I, I now want to add 3 times row 1 to row 2. So I won't change row 1, I won't change row 3, and I'll add 3 times row 1 to row 2. That's a case where the inverse is clear. It's clear in words what to do. Because what this did was simple to express. It just changed row 2 by, by subtracting 3 of row 1. So to invert it, I go that way. And if, you, if we do that calculation, 3 times this row plus 1 times this row comes out the right row of the identity. OK, so inverses are, and so if this matrix was E, and this matrix is I for identity, then what's the notation for this guy? E to the minus 1, E inverse. OK, Let, let's stop there for today. That's the, a, a little jump on what's coming on Monday. So see you Monday.